Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue Cartan's criterion for uh, semi-simplicity. So, we already saw uh, Cartan's first criterion uh, for solubility in terms of the trace conditions. So, because this trace condition is actually going to play big role, so we will introduce uh, what is called this uh, killing form in terms of in terms of this trace, okay, which will play uh, important role uh, later. What comes for next? So let me just uh, define uh, what is called this killing form. So this can be actually defined any finite dimensional complex Lie algebra. So there is no uh, restriction on the complex Lie algebra. So we take G to be uh, complex Lie algebra. So that means Lie algebra defined over complex numbers. So then the killing form is actually, so this is defined on G, okay. So it is actually a symmetric bilinear form defined by the following condition. So this is uh, denoted by kappa which is defined from G cross G to complex numbers. So this is defined to be kappa of x comma y is given by the trace of add x composition add y for all x, y and g. So this is how it is defined. So note that, so by definition since trace being linear and add x being linear, you can see that this kappa is actually a bilinear form. So the kappa is a bilinear form on this g, okay. So not only that, this is also a symmetric form is symmetric because uh, trace of AB is being trace of BA gives us kappa being symmetric. So now uh, there is one more important property that actually one can get it from the trace identity. So recall that trace of A times bracket BC is same as trace of bracket AB times C. So now if we just uh, uh, write this identity here in terms of kappa, so then what we get? So we get kappa of bracket XY times EZ is actually equal to trace of add X add Y. So this is bracket add X add x bracket y times this uh, z add z composition add z. So then we get exactly equal to trace of add x add y composition add z, okay. So now if you just uh, use this identity then you can see that this is same as trace of add x composition add y add z. So that means uh, this trace identity actually gives some condition on this kappa. So this kappa of x comma the bracket y z is same as the kappa of bracket x y comma z. So this identity is actually called associativity of this killing form. So the kappa of bracket x y z is same as kappa of x comma bracket y z and this is true for all x y z in G. So this is called associativity. So this associativity is actually very, very important uh, property of the killing form because this associativity can be used uh, to prove that uh, the radical of this killing form is actually an ideal inside G. Not only that, if you take any ideal, the perpendicular of that ideal is also 
ideal inside gene. Those things can be proved using this associativity. So, now once we have this killing form, it is not very hard to rewrite the Carton's first criterion. So, in terms of this uh, uh, killing form, so we say complex Li algebra G is soluble, the complex Li algebra G is soluble if and only if if we take the cup of x y is 0 for all x in g and y is in g dash. Okay. So, this is very very strong uh, condition for being solvable. So, let us see uh, in terms of radical of the killing form what this means. Okay. So, that way actually we will get some more insight about uh, this uh, criterion. So, what is the radical of the killing form? So, the radical of the killing form, okay, here is the definition. The radical of the killing form or kappa. So, it is by definition, okay, we denote it by small rad of kappa. So, this is those x and g such that this kappa is actually kills this x okay, for all y. So, the cop of x y is 0 for all y in g. So, such subspace. So, this is uh, definitely a subspace of your g. Okay. You can see that. So, this is indeed ideal inside g. So, here is the climb radical of this kappa is indeed ideal inside g. So, now what is this uh, uh, Carton's criterion? First criterion says about solubility. So, this says that uh, the radical of this kappa contains the derived algebra g dash. So, that is what it says. So, this is very, very strong constraint on, on this uh, killing form. The radical is actually very uh, you can see that this is not a good subspace, okay. but uh, solubility is actually equivalent saying that this radical is indeed contains large portion of uh, your g which is the derived algebra. Now, let us see why this radical is actually being ideal. Okay. So, to prove that radical is being ideal, let uh, x is in the radical and uh, y is in g. So, then we need to check the bracket x y is in the radical. So, let us compute the bracket x y. So, now to say that this bracket x y is in the radical. So, we have to compute how it is actually uh, the value of the trace with this bracket x y and digit. So, that is the kappa of bracket x y comma h. Now, using, using this uh, uh, the associativity of uh, kappa, you can see that the kappa of bracket x y comma z is same as the bracket. So, maybe we will switch this bracket y x comma z. Okay, maybe we do not need to switch, we will just keep it as it is. So, the kappa of bracket x y comma z is same as bracket kappa of x bracket y z. So, now since uh, this x is in the radical of kappa, we can see that kappa of x comma w is 0 for all w in g. So, since this y and z both are in g, so the bracket y z is in g. So, that implies this kappa of x comma this w is actually 0. So, that implies kappa of bracket x y comma z is 0 for all z in g. So, that implies the bracket x y is again in the radical of kappa. So, this proves that the radical of kappa is actually indeed ideal inside g. So, this is somewhat uh, important ideal. 
So, solubility actually equivalent to saying that. So, this G dash is actually contained in the radical of kappa. Okay. We will soon let see that uh, for semi simplicity it is completely the opposite thing. For semi simplicity city, so this radical should be actually 0. So, it is uh, it's actually as small as possible which is 0. So, now uh, let us compute how this killing form behaves with respect to some ideal. So, you start with ideal inside G. Okay. So, now since I being Lie algebra one can talk about killing form with respect to I okay. so which we call it kappa I. So, which is the killing form defined from I cross I to complex numbers. So, this is the killing form of of I. So, now we have killing form defined from G cross G to G uh, sorry C. So, we can also restrict this killing form to I cross I. So, we have this another map which is again symmetric bilinear map from I cross I to I. So, what is the connection between these two maps? So, it is uh, easy to see that uh, these two maps must be same. So, kappa defined on I should be same as kappa restricted to I cross I. Okay. So, this must be true for any ideal I in G. So, how one can prove this? It is again easy to prove. So, you start with the basis of I. Okay. So, start with a basis of I and extend this to extend this to G. So, then you can see that for any x in for any x in I. So, this add x this is actually going to map G into I. Okay. So, in particularly if you look at this add x with respect to the basis that we have constructed. Okay. So, this is the basis that I am talking about B. So, then you can see that this uh, matrix of this add x with respect to this uh, B will look like uh, this, uh, this block matrices. So, some A x 0 and B x 0. So, this A x is the matrix of add x restricted to I. Okay. This A x is the matrix of add x restricted to I. So, this is something uh, very easy to see. So, in particularly uh, if we actually uh, compute the composition, okay. if we take Y inside I, so then if we compute add x composition, add x composition add Y, then the matrix of this with respect to the same basis it will look like the product of these two matrices A x times A y and then here 0, 0 and whatever is there this is going to be A x times B y. So, which we do not care. Okay. So, this is how the matrix will look like. So, in particularly this A x time A y is the matrix is the matrix of this add x composition add y restricted to i. So, in particularly if you compute the kappa of x y, so which is the restriction of kappa of uh, i uh, to i cross i, then you can see that this is same as trace of a x a y, which is actually the definition of kappa i of x comma y. So, that proves the kappa restricted to i cross i is same as kappa I. Okay. So, this proves that uh, this killing form with respect to ideals behaves very well. Okay. So, now we are actually indeed ready to actually state the Cartan's second criterion for semi simplicity. So, we will actually uh, prove this criterion uh, using, using some basic informations about uh, the killing form. 
<coughs> again uh, we will actually need uh, the first criterion to in order to prove this uh, second criterion. So, let us actually first state the criterion and then uh, we will see. So, here are uh, the, the following statements actually equivalent ok, the following statements are all equivalent. So, here is the second criterion which again we call it theorem. So, what it says, so this is about again one can restrict to complex numbers. So, let uh, G be a complex Lie algebra. So, then G is semi simple. So, by definition the radical of this uh, G must be 0. So, that is the maximal I solvable ideal must be 0. So, that is the first uh, condition. So, now in terms of this killing form, the killing form of this uh, uh, of this uh, G must be non-degenerate. So, that means, so the radical of uh, this killing form must be 0. So, the killing form is non-degenerate. So, this is by definition radical of this kappa being 0 ok. So, here the bus by definition radical of G being 0 ok. So, the third condition is that G has no non-zero idea, non-zero abelian idea. So, this is more or less equivalent to the definition and the fourth condition is again we can write rewrite this non-zero abelian ideal being non-zero solvable ideal. G has no non-zero soluble ideal inside G ok. So, we already proved that uh, 3 and 4 are equivalent. So, so we will just only prove first 3 are equivalent. So, how one proves actually uh, 1 implies 2. So, you first assume that uh, uh, G is semi simple that means the maximal soluble ideal that is actually 0. Now, look at this uh, radical of uh, this uh, killing form K ok. So, 1 implies 2. So, look at this radical of K. So, by definition this is those x in G such that the killing form cop of x y is 0 for all y in G ok. So, note that in particularly if we take any x y from this radical of kappa. So, then cop of x y is 0. So, then using this uh, first criterion of first Cartan's criterion of solubility, we can conclude that radical of kappa must be actually soluble. Okay. So, note that kappa of x y is 0 for all x y in radical of kappa. Okay. So, that implies radical of kappa must be soluble. Okay. But we already checked this is an ideal. So, this is soluble plus ideal. So, this is uh, actually contained inside radical of G, but G is being uh, semi simple that implies that radical of G is 0. So, that implies that this radical of kappa is also 0. So, that means kappa is non-degenerate kappa is non-degenerate ok. So, now what is about 2 implies 3? So, we assume that kappa is actually non-degenerate that means radical of kappa is 0. Then we want to prove that G has no non-zero abelian ideal. So, let us assume that uh, G has some non-zero abelian ideal. So, there is this I which is uh, non-zero abelian ideal, abelian ideal inside your G. So, then you can see that uh, if we take uh, these uh, maps, let us say A is from I and then X is from G, then look at this add A, composition add X, composition add A. 
So, add A is going to map G to I and then X is going to map I to I. So, then A will map I to 0. So, that means this add A, add X composition add A, this map G to 0. So, in particularly if we take this add X composition add A, so this square will be 0 on G. Okay. So, in particularly this add X composition add A, this is a nilpotent operator on G. So, kappa of A X is 0 for all X in G. Okay. So, this implies this I is actually contained in radical of kappa, but radical of kappa is given to be 0 that is the condition 2. So, that says that uh, this I must be 0. Okay, which is a contradiction because we started with uh, i being non-zero. So, that proves that uh, 2 implies 3. Okay. Now, for 3 implies uh, 4, so that is obvious because if G has a non-zero soluble ideal, then look at this uh, derived series. Okay. So, then the last but uh, first non-zero term Okay, that will be actually abelian ideal that we have seen already. So, again like if it has no non-zero soluble ideal then that would imply that uh, uh, there is no actually maximal soluble ideal. So, all these statements are being equivalent is proved using Cartan's first criterion. So, this uh, k being non-degenerate this is very very important uh, criterion for semi-simplicity. So, let us see what are all the consequence of uh, uh, this k being actually non-degenerate. So, given ideal inside G, so one can talk about what is called I perp. So, this is uh, the perpendicular of uh, I okay, perp of I. So, what is this by definition? So, this is those x in G such that the cap of x comma y is 0 for all y in i. Okay. So, those elements that are actually orthogonal to uh, this all elements of capital A that is called i perp. So, it is easy to see that i perp is always subspace of g. Okay. So, this is a subspace. So, one can uh, using the associativity one can prove that i perp is indeed ideal inside G. So, let us check that. So, let uh, x is in I perp and then y is in G. So, we need to climb that the bracket x y. So, that is inside your I perp. So, how one can prove this is inside I perp? So, let us uh, do the computation. So, if we compute kappa of the bracket x y and then you take some eject from your your i. Okay. So, then we need to show uh, this cap of bracket x y comma eject that must be 0. So, that is the definition of a bracket x y being in i perp. So, then if you take for eject in i the cap of bracket x y eject is equal to cap of x comma bracket y eject using the associativity. So, then you can see that this uh, bracket y z. So, since y is coming from g, z is coming from i. So, this is coming from capital I. Since x is coming from i perp, you can see that the cap of x comma bracket y z. So, this term must be 0. So, that implies bracket cap of bracket x y comma z is 0 for all z is in i. So, that implies that the bracket x y is in i perp. So, this proves i perp is indeed ideal inside G. Okay. So, now uh, if we have this uh, semi simple Lie algebra, then we know that uh, this killing form actually being non degenerate. So, because it is actually non degenerate, so that would immediately imply that. So, if G is semi simple. So, then and I is an ideal inside G. 
So, since k being non-degenerate, we immediately have the dimension of i plus dimension of i per is being equal to dimension of g. Okay. So, this is actually immediate from this uh, k being non-degenerate. Now, not only this you can actually see that if you look at what will happen to the intersection. Okay. So, now look at uh, i intersection i per and then see what happens. Okay. So, this is nothing but those elements that are common to both i and i, i intersection i and i per. But if I take any x comma y in this i intersection i pair, so we can see that uh, kappa of x comma y must be 0 because x is coming from i and y is coming from i pair. So, now if we use this Cartan's first criterion, okay, the first criterion says Cartan's first criterion says i intersection i pair must be soluble. So, since intersection of two ideals must be ideal, so this implies i intersection i pair is a soluble ideal ideal inside your g. Now, if you assume g is semi simple, then you can see that there is no non-zero soluble ideal. So, that forces that i intersection i per is 0. So, this proves g is indeed equal to i direction i per. Okay. So, because the dimension of i and the dimension of i per, so they add up to dimension of g and i intersection i per p is being 0 that would imply that g must be equal to i direction i per. So, indeed what we proved, so we summarize this is as corollary if i is ideal non-zero ideal inside your g and g is semi simple then g can be written as i direction i per not only that i must be actually semi simple moreover i must be semi simple why because if we take I g modulo i perp so then that is isomorphic to i so now if you look at the radical of this g modulo i perp you can see that so that must be 0 because radical of g is 0. So, that would imply that i must be semi simple. Okay. So, now uh, using this corollary we can actually decompose any semi simple Lie algebra into simple Lie algebras. So, that I will actually state it as theorem. Okay. So, now one can use induction and then write any semi simple Lie algebra as a direct sum of simple ideals. And if we think about it, this is also going to give us one more characterization for semi simple Lie algebras. So, you take G be a complex Lie algebra. So, then G is semi simple. if and only if there are i simple ideals or simple algebras okay g1 etc gr such that g is equal to g1 direction etc direction gr so one way is actually clear so this is just by induction on the dimension and kappa being uh, non degenerate so, if uh, you start with G, if it does not have any proper non-zero ideal then it must be simple. So, in that case we just leave it otherwise you choose non-zero proper ideal then you write G as i direction i perp using the earlier result. Now, using induction on i we can actually write G as direct sum of simple ideals. So, that is uh, obvious. 
So, now we will prove the other way. So, if you actually write G as G 1 direct sum etcetera direct sum G R where G i's are simple ideals. So, then we want to claim that G must be actually semi simple. So, to prove G is semi simple, so we will actually uh, prove that directly the radical of G must be 0 or otherwise we can also take some solvable ideal and then try to prove that must be 0. So, let us try to pr prove that the radical is actually 0. So, let us call the radical of G to be i. So, we claim that radical of G must be 0. So, note that this i bracket with G i. So, this is if it is uh, non-zero. So, in any case whether it is 0 or not does not matter this has to be subset of i intersection G i. Okay, because uh, uh, G i being uh, simple ideals. So, the bracket i with the G i must uh, lie inside both capital I as well as G i. So, that would imply that uh, this is actually subset of I intersection G i. So, since I is soluble ideal, so this is also must be soluble. Okay. So, this bracket being soluble. So, not only bracket the intersection is also soluble I intersection G i because I is being soluble. So, that implies uh, since G i they are all simple ideals. So, that makes I intersection G i being 0. So, that implies the bracket I with uh, G i that is also 0. So, now note that I bracket with G should be equal to summation the bracket I with G i, but each one of them 0. So, that will imply that this bracket i with g is 0. So, that makes i is subset of the center of g. Okay. Now, since g is g 1 direct sum etcetera direct sum g r that implies the center of g must be just uh, sum of the centers z g 1 direct sum etcetera z g r. Since each g i is actually simple ideal. So, that implies that z of g i is 0 for all i and that tells us that center of g is 0. So, that will imply that i is 0 because i is subset of center of g. So, this proves that uh, i which is radical of g must be 0. Okay. So, that proves that uh, g is semi simple. So, this is a very very important uh, criterion because it says that the bracket uh, sorry if we know G is semi simple then G can be written as a direct sum of simple ideals. Now, as an Im immediate corollary one can easily get the following. So, since actually uh, this uh, G can be written as a direct sum of simple ideals. So, we can see that uh, so the the derived algebra of g so g bracket g that must be g if g is actually semi simple why because we know this uh, is true for uh, simple ideals okay if g is i is simple lie algebra so then we know that the bracket g i bracket G i is non-zero and it is ideal inside G i. So, that says the bracket G i G i must be equal to G i. So, now since G being semi simple you can write G as G 1 direct sum etcetera direct sum G r with the G i being simple ideals. So, you can see that the bracket G g will be summation the bracket G i G i. So, which is same as summation G i 
which is G. Okay. So, this proves immediately the bracket of GG which is the derived algebra is equal to G. So, now as I said if I is an ideal of G, G is semi simple then the quotient of that I is also the, the quotient G mod I is also semi simple okay. that is also immediate corollary. If I is an ideal inside G and G is semi simple, so then G mod I is also semi simple. So, semi simple Lie algebras are also well behaved uh, with respect to quotient. Okay. This is very important uh, property of this uh, semi simple Lie algebras. Okay, so, let me just recall Cotton's uh, second criterion and their consequences after that I will stop. Okay, so, what we proved? We proved that. So, this is the Cotton's uh, second criterion. So, G is semi simple, you take G being finite dimensional complex Lie algebra, then G is semi simple if and only if the radical of this the killing form that is 0. So, it is a very very important uh, criterion for semi simplicity. So, this is for the semi criterion for semi simplicity we used solubility uh, criterion to prove this. So, what is solubility criterion? G is uh, soluble if and only if the radical of kappa is actually contains the derived algebra G dash. So, these two are two extreme cases you can see in terms of this uh, killing form. Okay. So, I will stop here, uh, I will actually continue with uh, uh, derivations of semi simple Lie algebras in the next class. So, we will use whatever results that we have learned so far about this Jordan Chevalier decomposition and so on and then use that in order to understand what is called this abstract Jordan decomposition uh, for semi simple Lie algebras. Thank you, I will stop here.